again to discuss Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. With me, as always, is my host, Mr. Whedon. How do you do today? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I've been having a pretty active day, so I'm kind of having the adrenaline pumping. Good, good, good. Now you oh. can use that energy. You could use that energy to talk about Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. And mind you, folks, this is the newest one we're discussing. The one with the least came out. Yep. Yeah. So first off, what were your general thoughts of the movie? Overall, I liked it. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. And to piggyback off of that, I have to say I did as well. Yeah. You know, I heard there was issues with the black, the darks in the movie, but I didn't have an issue during that scene. The what the what happening? What happening? The darkness of the movie, not oh, the like tone. tone the, not the not, tone. Okay. The like the dark setting when they did the nighttime shots. Mm -hmm. I really didn't have no issues with it. It wasn't bad for me. No, it would seem fine. Yeah, like, dude. I mean, did you play the the most recent Tomb Raider game somewhat? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, um, that depends. There's two. Uh, there is Tomb Raider, and then there's Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is the sequel to Tomb Raider. Um, I played I, I played the 2013 reboot, which is what this movie got its inspiration from. So yes, I did play that game, and I did beat it. How much of that game was in this movie? Would you say? All right. Um. Okay. Uh, Hemiko, the uh, the the queen, she was in the video game. However. In the video game, she was some supernatural like witch that was using one of Laura's best friends to possess to be resurrected. The way they portrayed her in the movie is not the same way they portrayed her in the game. In the movie, she is a queen that was a carrier for a very aggressive disease. That did not happen in the game. That was not in the game. The only thing that Hamiko shares in the movie with the video game is the name, and that's it. Okay, well, they, you see that they changed it, but do you like the change? Yeah, I'm all for it, yeah. I, I, I had no problem with it. Um, let's see. Uh, another thing that I noticed uh, is um, – crap. Uh, it was on the oh, no, no, not the boat scene, but uh, Matthias Vogel, Walt, Walton Goggins' character. Uh -huh. In the game, Matthias Vogel is a cult leader on the island. He's not, he's not affiliated with Trinity. He's a cult leader on the island who worships Hamiko. And he's trying to resurrect her in the game so that he and his followers can escape the island. Because on in the game, the island is continuously surrounded by a storm. And they can never leave. Any attempt to leave would be met with death. And he and Matthias Vogel thinks that resurrecting Hamiko will be his key to leave the island. I like that change. Yeah. I like the change they did for the movie. Yeah, but, the, to be honest, in the movie, Matthias Vogel actually made more sense. He did a lot more sense. Where he's an agent of Trinity, he's trying to find Hamiko to get the disease and then give it to Trinity. It, it makes sense. It's a bit, it's a bit simplistic, but it makes sense. I remember when we discussed um, when the trailers first came out, and you saw that you're like, I don't know if I'm gonna like this change. <laughs> Turns out, I actually did. To to be honest. In most in the, in the video game movies that we've re that we've gotten recently, like Assassin's Creed, Warcraft, and Tomb Raider, you all know my thoughts on Assassin's Creed. I hated that movie. That movie was that movie was so stupid. I, I and not stupid in a good way. I'm talking stupid in a bad way. Uh, don't no, feel bad. I watched like the first twenty minutes and I was like, this shit's trash. Yeah, it's bad. I watched the whole thing though. I sat through the entire movie and I'm like, why? Why did I do this? But no, I would say that I enjoyed Tomb Raider the same amount that I enjoyed Warcraft. Yeah, the I'll, the, I'll agree with you there. Yeah, it's just the movies were not huge successes, but as video game movies, they are the more entertaining of the bunch of them. I like what they built with this world. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like well, the well, fact that the father wasn't dead. Well, he is now. At but... the end, you know... He meets, but he dies because he's trying to protect his daughter. Yeah, I did like that. I kind of figured that her father wasn't dead. So when he was revealed, I was like, "Yep, I knew it. The guy was alive the whole time. I knew it." But um, no, um, I, I actually uh, some of the smaller bits of the movie. I like Nick Frost, the pawnbroker. Yeah, yeah I mean, short little role for him. Yeah, I, I, I didn't I, even I, know I, he was I, in this movie till I saw him as the pawnbroker. Yeah, I liked I liked him in that. 
And I also like at the end where she's talking to the pawnbroker and his wife, and then she's like grabbing the guns, and she'll say, "I'll take two. <laughs> I love I'm that. Hope, scene. Dude, I really hope they make a sequel. Well, the thing is, video game movies don't really get a chance to get sequels because, sure, that's they a, might. That, screw that shit. This movie, it's. I honestly feel it made more than its budget. I if, could it be made, wrong. if it made more than its budget, then there is a chance that it will get a sequel. I doubt it, but it's possible. I mean, hopefully with the DVD sale, Blu-ray sales, let me reframe that, mm-hmm. and digital sales, it helps to push it over. Because, I mean, that's kind of what helped Pacific Rim. Yeah. Well, take a look at, like, Warcraft. You see Duncan Jones, the director of that movie, he had written the story for Warcraft to be set up as a trilogy. But due to the lackluster ratings for reviews for Warcraft, it's never going to happen. We're not going to get a Warcraft 2 or 3. I believe 2 is going to happen, but it's going to be more of a... Where's that game featured that heavily in Japan or China? Oh, so it's going to be a Chinese exclusive? Uh, It might not be an exclusive, but it's going to be catered around that market with their money as the financial backer. And if it comes to to our section of the world whatever it makes is what it makes because it was financially i think that movie did well over there mm-hmm. oh no yeah it was because warcraft is a big world of warcraft is a big deal over in china but uh hell they they even went as far as to make a world of warcraft theme park in china without the permission of blizzard the creators of warcraft and they got sued oh my god they got sued that story was hilarious <laughs> Oh, man, but like I said, I like the story. It flowed well. I mm-hmm. like I, – I know his, his name was what, Daniel Hugh? Daniel Yu. I liked his character. Mm-hmm. I really hope they – if we do get a sequel that he – because Laura always had like a little sidekick buddy, right? Yeah, the thing is is that her sidekick changes across multiple games. Oh, man, see, I don't want that. I would like it to be him. Well, the thing is, is that he's an original character. As far as I know about the Tomb Raider video games, he never makes an appearance. And there is always one constant among uh, Laura's uh, quote-unquote sidekicks, and that's Samantha. Samantha is like Laura's best friend. Okay. And um, she was the girl that Hemiko was trying to possess in the 2013 Tomb Raider reboot. Yeah. thing is, Sam wasn't in the movie, though. So, um, they'll probably they, explore that in another one if they do go that way. Yeah. So we've got Trinity, and I believe we got the reveal of who's the leader of that group. Oh well, I wouldn't really say that she is a lead. She's the leader, the like top commander. I think she's just a high-ranking member. Okay. Yeah. But it's funny how. An organization, an organization like Trinity is not led by one person. It's led by a council or some kind of board of directors. That's what it's led by. But it's funny how Laura gave power to that lady to like run the company. Yep. And that lady is the one running Trinity as well. Well, might be a founding member of the Trinity as well. Yeah. So she's using Laura's company as like the financial backer of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, I mean, like I said, I, I liked the movie. I thought it was really enjoyable. I kind of want to see a sequel. How would you rate it on a scale of 1 to 5? You know I don't do 1 to 5. I do 1 to 10. Okay, 1 to 10. I'd give it mm, maybe in 7.7 7 out of 10. I was thinking a 7 out of 10. Yeah. I definitely, this is one of those where you could rent or own it, in my opinion. I'm probably going to buy it at some point. Yeah, it's worth it. I think yeah. it's worth it. It has that rewatchability down the line. Okay. But that is our discussion for this movie review. We'll be back for a throwback Thursday of Jumanji and Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Until then, we're out. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.